Hello, my name is Mr. Asbury, and I'm back with my tricky A-level math series. I'm super excited about it. I got all the way up to number 62 uh, over the last couple of years, uh, and so I'm starting off now at 63, and I'm hoping to get all the way to 100 by the end of the exam period, which in, incidentally is in like 103 days. So uh, it's come around super quick, uh, and I'm really hoping that these tricky questions are gonna expose you to some of the hardest and most challenging Questions on the A-level. Um, check out the other 62 if you haven't already. Again, some absolute gems in there. And I've also got lots more content coming your way, like predictive papers, exam analysis. Um, so do subscribe if you don't want to miss out. Uh, and check all of my revision materials, which are in the description, um, including live revision sessions, which I'm very much looking forward to doing as well. Now, the questions that I pick, are generally speaking not always from edXL past papers and the reason why is because I've done all the past papers they're all on my channel you can watch every single question from past papers which I recommend you do um, not watch every question but you know do every question and then any ones you get stuck on you can watch the video solutions on my channel so these questions uh, this one in particular is from an international A-level paper um, so still have to use the same techniques as you would do for a regular uh, Edexcel A-level paper, um, but it's just a new question. It's a question you're probably unlikely to have seen before, uh, and it's good to test yourself in that respect. And it's the same with all my predicted papers that I make. I try and create questions, uh, find questions that you've never seen before, so it's really good practice. Anyway, right, enough of chat. Let's get into this. This is a really, really tricky question to get started. I thought I'd want to start with a bang. Yeah, it's really challenging, uh, but it's going to be good. Uh, so I'll start off by uh, drawing a margin, and I'll put uh, question A uh, there, and we'll get started with differentiating this with respect to Y. So in order to do this, I'm going to set it equal to X, um, just to give us a little basis. Um, in fact, I need another margin there. That's going to make it look nice. Yes, that looks good. Okay, so A, uh, I want to do x is equal to, I'm going to write it as a bracket. So 1 plus 2 ln y to the negative 2. Uh, because, of course, this bracket here is on the denominator. So we can use a negative power to bring it up to the top. Now, I'm going to use the chain rule. So I'm going to say x is equal to u minus to the minus 2, where u is equal to the bracket, which is 1 plus 2 ln y. Perfect. So this is classic chain rule techers here. You're going to want to do dx by du, so differentiating this with respect to u. Uh, and this is going to give us minus 2, the minus 2 is going to come down, u, and then to the minus 3, drop the power down by 1. And next, we're going to want to do du by dy, so differentiating this. And 0 differentiates, uh, sorry, 1 differentiates to 0. Ln y differentiates to 1 over y. So 2 ln y differentiates to 2 over y. Perfect. So now, with the chain rule, we, what we want is we want to find dx by dy, because we want to differentiate this function x with respect to y, as it says here. Now to do that, we just multiply these two together because dx by dy is dx by du times by du by dy, like so. Um, because you can see here that the, um, the du's would cancel and it's the same expression on both sides. So that is the chain rule. Okay, so dx by du is minus two u to the minus three multiplied by du by dy, which is 2 over y. Okay, so let's just tidy this up a bit, um, because we could write this as, well, minus 2 times 2 is minus 4. And then all the other things I could put on the denominator, because the u is to the negative power, so that can go on the denominator. And remember, u is this, 1 plus 2 ln y. So I can say 1 plus 2 ln y uh, to the power of negative 3. So it's to the power of 3 if it's on the denominator. And then we've also got this, um, this uh, over y here. So that can go to the denominator as well. So just times through by y. And the minus 2 and the 2, they stay on the top because they are not on the bottom. <laughs> so minus 2 times 2 is minus 4. 
Um, and there we have it. That is our derivative. So that is part A uh, done. Two marks in the bag. I mean, it's two marks. We could do it by inspection, but this is the formal way of doing the chain rule. And I want to show you the formal method in case you don't know it. Okay, next one um, is question B, and it says use, um, it says hence, which is a super, super important word, perhaps one of the most important words in the A-level to look out for. It means you must use this previous question in your next question. You must. It's not an option. It is mandatory. Find a general solution to the differential equation. Right, so differential equations, tough. What I do for differential equations is I'm going to highlight all of the terms which involve an x in one color, and I'm going to highlight all of the terms that contain a y in the other color. And then the first thing I'm going to do after I've done that, so the second thing, is I'm going to multiply through by dx. So this is going to give me 3 cosec 2x dy is equal to y 1 plus 2y cubed dx. Okay, great. So now I know that the right-hand side is the green side and the left-hand side is the blue side. So I need to move by multiplication or division all of the terms that are green to the right and all the terms that are blue to the left. Okay, three is neither green or blue, so let's just leave it where it is. Um, so I'll just leave it here, three. And now, in order to get this blue term to the left, we're going to need to divide through by that big chunk. And that is going to give me y on the bottom, and it's going to give me 1 plus 2 ln y to the power of 3, like that. And in fact, I've just spotted that that is the same as this. So this could be helpful. This is promising. Okay, I'm going to write dy here, because I'm going to move this guy, because it's green, over to the other side. So, I'm going to divide through by cosec 2x. Now, what is the equivalent to a dividing by cosec 2x? I could multiply by sine 2x, because cosec and sine are reciprocals of one another. So, rather than dividing by cosec, I could just multiply through by sine. Uh, and this will give me sine 2x dx. And that's perfect. I've got all my greens on one side, and I've got all the, the blues on the other we are good to go. So what do we do next? We integrate both sides of our equation. Now, here is where that hence part comes into play. Because I need to integrate this left-hand side here. And this left-hand side is looking very, very similar to this box right here. Okay, in fact, let me just, this is the important part. It's looking very similar to this, this red box. Okay, now, it's not quite the red box, is it? It's not quite the red box, and we'll deal with that in a moment. But where did that red box come from? That red box came from us differentiating the question at the start. So this green box here. So if I take the green box and differentiate, then that gives me the red box. So because differentiate and integration are inverse processes, if I take the red box and integrate, it should take me back to the green box. So what I need to do is just to integrate the red box, I can go straight over here and my answer will be the green box. Now, I don't want to integrate exactly the red, the, the red box. Very close. It's out by a factor. And that's no problem, because when we multiply through a function and then differentiate it afterwards, it will be the same um, as if I didn't multiply through 
and then I just multiplied after. So in this instance, I just need to multiply by minus 3 over 4. That should do the job. The minuses will cancel out and give me the plus that I need here. The 4 and the divide by 4 will cancel out, and we'll still have a 3, which is exactly what we have here. Now, therefore, if I go over here and multiply by 3 over 4, then these two boxes are linked perfectly. And the red box now is exactly what I'm trying to integrate, so the answer is exactly what the green box is over there. So I can just write down here, once I've integrated this, the answer will be minus 3, I'll just put it like that, um, and on top, and there's a 4 on the bottom because we're timesing by uh, 3 quarters, uh, 1 plus 2 ln y squared. Perfect. So that left hand side has been integrated. Um, and then the right hand side is more of a standard integral. Sine integrates to minus cos. So we write minus cos 2x. But because it's not x as the input, it's 2x, we must divide by the derivative of the input. And the derivative of the input is 2, so we're dividing by it. 2, so it's actually minus 1 half cos 2x, and then of course plus c. We don't need to put plus c on both sides, just one side is absolutely fine. And perfect, that is the general solution. So that was four marks there. Job done, circle that up, and we'll move on to part c, but I need to grab some more space. Okay, so here um, is the answer to part b. Uh, now we need to move on to part C, uh, and we need to work out the particular solution, which means we need some information in order to work out what our constant of integration is. So in this instance, uh, we just need to sub in 1 and uh, pi over 6. Uh, so we get minus 3, 4, 1 plus 2 ln 1 squared is equal to minus 1 half cos of 2 times pi over 6 plus c. Um, ln 1 is 0, so 2 ln 1 is also 0. Plus 1 is 1. Um, and then squared is still 1. <laughs> times by 4 is 4. So the, uh, so the left-hand side is minus 3 over 4. And over here, um, pi over 6 is um, times by 2 is pi over 3, pi over 3 is 60 degrees, cos of 60 degrees is a half, times by minus a half is minus a quarter, plus c, uh, so therefore it follows uh, that c must equal uh, minus a half. Okay, great, so we can then write out the, um, the full equation again, uh, which is our solution, our particular solution. Uh, we just replace the C with what we now know it to be, um, which is um, minus a half, like so. Okay, now comes the tricky part, um, if it wasn't already, and that is rearranging it so it's like this. Okay, um, so the first thing I notice, which I think is really important, is that it is sec x. So it is not 2x, and that means that we're going to have to use a double angle uh, formula for this cos 2x in order to get it so it's just x. Um, so that's the first thing we're going to do. So I'm going to write minus, uh, I'm just going to write this, uh, this, this side out again, um, just to keep the work nice and neat so the examiner knows what I'm doing. Um, and in fact, we're going to uh, take out um, minus a half to write cos 2x uh, plus 1, like so. Uh, so just factoring out minus a half. Okay, um, now over here, let me just remind ourselves of what the double angle formula is. So cos 2x is, is a good one because there's... Uh, cos squared minus sine squared. You can rearrange that to make 1 minus 2 sine squared. Or you can rearrange that to make 2 uh, cos squared 
x minus 1. So it's super useful because there's three different ways and you should definitely memorize all three. You don't want to be working these out in the exam. Now, let's remind ourselves that we are looking for a sec x and the reciprocal of sec is, co is, is cosine. So it would make sense that this would be the one that we would go with because we don't want a sine uh, at all. So this will give us uh, minus 3 over... 4, 1 plus 2 ln y squared is equal to minus a half cos 2x, we're going to replace with 2 cos squared x minus 1, and then there's also the plus 1 here as well. Perfect. Okay, just need to grab some more space. Okay, so first thing we can do is we can uh, divide both sides through by this minus uh, to get rid of that minus. Um, so this is going to give us uh, 3 over 4, 1 plus 2 ln y squared, um, and then the, uh, the the minus 1 and the plus 1, they're going to cancel out, uh, and then we're also going to have a half times by the 2, uh, so they're going to cancel out as well, so we're just going to be left with cos squared x, um, which is nice, um, which is really nice, uh, because now we can square root uh, both sides fully. And that's going to give us this sec x, well not sec x, sorry, but it's going to give us a cos x, which then we can take the reciprocal of. So let's square root both sides. Now if we've got a fraction, to square root a fraction, we square root the numerator separately uh, and the denominator as well. Now these two things are multiplied together, so we can square root them uh, individually, then multiply them afterwards. So the square root of 4 is 2, multiplied by the square root of this, or just cancel the square on the bracket. So we just get this, uh, and that's going to equal uh, cos x, like so. Okay, this is good. We're really getting somewhere now. Um, so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to take this bracket uh, and multiply it to the other side. Uh, and I'm going to take this cos x, and I'm going to um, divide it to the other side. So this is going to give us root 3 over 2. Now, again, I did this with the, uh, with the cosec and the, and the sine. If I'm dividing by cos x, it's the same as timesing by the reciprocal of that, which is sec x. Uh, and then this blue bracket is going to come up to the other side. Uh, and that's starting to look really good now. Okay, uh, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to minus 1 to both sides. So we're going to have root 3 over 2 sec x minus 1 is equal to 2 ln y. Uh, and then we're going to divide through by 2, so it's going to give me root 3 over 4 sec x minus a half is equal to ln y. Um, which is, again, that's great now because we've got this minus a half here as well. Um, so I'm going to finish up uh, over here uh, by doing the inverse of ln y, which would be taking uh, e as the base and raising each side as the power. So this gives me y is equal to e to the power of root 3 over 4 sec x minus 1 half. Um, and I think that is perfect. That's our final answer. Um, and then all that's left to do, perhaps, just for housekeeping, I would write that a is equal to... Um, I'll just run out of space, but I would write just that a is equal to, because it does say a is an irrational number to be found, so a clearly here is the root 3 over 4. Um, job done. Right, I really hope you enjoyed that. Uh, subscribe, look out for my tricky A-level series. I'm going to try and get all the way up to 100, like I said at the start, and also look out for my predicted papers, which are going to be coming out very soon, and my live sessions. I've got lots of stuff planned, and I hope it is going to be super helpful for you, and you get the grade which you want. Bye for now.